This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello, team. Okay. Let's start with the uh, you know, continuation of the test ng day two. Okay. So I'm going to create a new class, guys, here. And let me call it as a my test ng one. Okay. And let me pull this one to here. And here I'm gonna create one more class, okay? That is a my test ng2. Okay, so let me delete it. This is not required for us. I have two classes, guys. So this is a test ng1 and this is a test ng2. Okay. Let me give this particular name as a uh, for example a okay system dot out dot print length. It is taking some time. Okay. Yeah, this is taking some time. Then, yeah, you can see uh, this one I will call it as method A from my test ng1. Okay. This method I have done like this. In the same way, my test ng2 is also having the method. Uh, let's say this is a B method. Okay, so here B and this is from my test ng2. Okay, now my requirement is I want to run the both the test cases. I want to run the both the test cases. Then how can we do this? How can I how can I run these two test cases? For example, if I run from this class, what happens? Only this class will be run. What the methods which are present inside of this method will run, right? So let's try to run the program. Run as test ng test. Okay, you can see uh, this is getting executed, right? So you can see method A. And if I run the this particular method, and what happens? Only this method will be executed. You can see this one, uh, this one method B from test ng2 is getting. Met. But what is my requirement? My requirement is to execute the, both the test cases. Then how can we execute? How can we execute uh, test cases which are present in the different classes? Okay, and how can we control uh, test ng execution from the XML file? Okay, so today we are going to discuss something called test ng XML file. Okay, so where you can control uh, entire execution of the test ng, and also you can pass the parameters also by using param concept. Okay, so different things that we can do using the uh, test ng XML concept. Okay. Now let's see how to create the XML file. Okay. Now we can directly create the XML file at project level. But what I'm going to do, I will give you a shortcut way where you can, you know, uh, create XML file uh, without having some basic idea of it. Okay. So what I'm going to do, my requirement is to create uh, these two classes, right? So I need to create the XML file these two classes. So I am selecting these two classes here like this. And right click on it and right click on it. Now you can see uh, test ng. We are always uh, using the first option to create the test ng classes, but here I am using something called convert to test ng. The second option, whatever we have, I am just selecting it. So once I select the option, you can see the basic XML structure. Uh, you know, you can see it is getting displayed over here. Okay. The name of the location, uh, you can see in the same uh, project, I have something called this test ng XML file. That's fine. Suit name. I don't want to change any suit name. The class name is also remaining same. Okay. I want to go with the normal uh, XML file, which is generated by this particular option. Okay. So saying next and then simply say finish. So once you're done and you can see uh, the XML file has been generated at project level, at the project level. You can see, uh, you know, source, and this is the one. Uh, what is meaning that particular test ng XML file? Okay, so from here onwards, you can control uh, entire execution. If you have a different number of test cases, you can add. If, if you have n number of classes, uh, which are having different number of methods, you can control everything from the XML file. Okay, and uh, we need to understand the hierarchy of the XML file. Okay, so remember. 
the hierarchy of the test in the XML file starts with something called suit and then it will start with test I mean once it is done once at suit level after that we will be having something called test remember one thing we can have only one suit per XML one suit per XML but this test you can add a number of times for example this is IE test the same test case I want to execute in Chrome test you can copy and you can paste here like this and this will be another test for you that means same set of test cases you're executing second time okay you can add a number of times like this but their name should be different okay that we will see uh, you know uh, in the which upcoming uh, examples also but timing just understand that suit is the first one uh, test is the second level at third level you can also have something called packages and also fourth level you can have classes and fifth level you can also have at something called method level also okay so from every level you can control the uh, you know execution which one to be considered which one to be uh, you know not to consider which method to consider which classes to consider everything you can uh, you know control over here now once this XML file is generated uh, I am just running the program you can see run as a test ng suit now you can see both the methods from both the classes has been executed you can see method B and method A okay all the options whatever we discussed yesterday uh, all things will be applicable for example if you say priority 1 and then priority 2 and this way this will be executed uh, in the same order okay so all the rules which has to be applied on that at method level ad tag invocation count or timeout everything will be applied same but from here it will collect every method from these classes and these classes it will, it will start doing the execution now uh, for example if I don't want to execute this test case okay so I will simply say comment it out okay I'm just commenting it out and if I run the program and it will execute only one test case you can see it is getting executed only one test case. like this if you have a test cases like you know different test cases in different uh, classes you can control uh, over here the specifying but not specifying okay so I hope it is clear guys a uh, basic structure of the uh, XML file uh, how we are going to add it over here okay this is the first basic things that we have seen now what I'm gonna do uh, I will create one more class I will create one more class where I will add five methods guys okay so for example uh, method a and method B like this I will add five methods okay. so this is a method a and let me add it as a, a. similar fashion B uh, let it remain same C method C method and it is a G method and let me add it as a E method okay so I have five methods guys I have five methods what's my requirement is I don't want to execute uh, maybe method B and method E okay uh, how can we control this okay if uh, different classes may have different methods and how can we control so we cannot say enabled equal to false because if the test case number is more then a test case count is more you, you know going to each and every uh, method and you know changing it uh, might not be feasible sometime right so how do you do this from from the uh, XML file how do you control the execution uh, or you know execution of the different methods from the XML file that is what we are going to see now okay so same thing we need to create the XML file for that okay so you can see right click and say uh, convert to test ng okay and next okay and what happens is if you uh, do it one more time this will be overridden right so I don't want to uh, remove the existing XML file there is a reason I am giving the name as uh, one test ng one dot XML okay so next and then finish okay so simply click on over here you can see uh, the same thing suit name and test name and classes are there right so uh, this is uh, structure that we have seen just now earlier okay now my requirement is I want to control couple of things okay I don't want to execute uh, every test case okay so what we can do this is a one the class whose tag is starting over here the same tag is uh, ending over here okay 
so i am deleting this particular tag and here i will add a slash class okay so inside of this method and here you can start controlling the uh, you know uh, methods using include concept and exclude concept now my requirement is i want to execute every test case except a sql okay this is my test case okay now if you want to do that you have one option that is called as exclude okay so let me add okay first we need to specify from the method level like right? so method in the method what you want to uh, do okay so in the method once it is done here i have to specify something called exclude okay you can see exclude name equal to okay so i am saying that please exclude method c okay so this method i don't want to execute okay now here you can see uh, c i have specified over here if I run the program what will happen every method will be executed except c you can see a b d and e and c is not executed like this we can exclude uh, any number of test cases here so here you can say for example i don't want to execute method e okay now run the program you can see all the methods will be executed except those two except those two clear uh, team do you have any doubts uh, what exactly this uh, exclude the option is doing okay so i hope it is clear i am continuing with the next topic bashu yeah like every time you have to write that exclude tag for uh, c and e can we not write that c and e in one tag only one tag means yes we have to write no okay Okay. For example, if you want to include the uh, specific one, I don't want to execute everything. For example, I want to execute only E. Okay, so if I run the program, what will happen? So just run the program and see what the output we are getting. You can see only E method is getting executed. Okay, so in the reverse order, if you don't if you don't want to execute every test case, if you want to execute only the method E, and you can say include include method only. whatever you include it that method will be executed and exclude means everything will be executed uh, apart from the one which you specified over here so in this way you can do at mid package level also at class level also okay which one to be executed which one to not executed everything you can control for classes and for packages also okay same uh, package names and class names you have to provide over here okay so i hope it is clear guys the concept of include and exclude over here okay uh, this is also one of the way and you can also control from the excel sheet also which one to execute which one to not execute based on the flag which is present in the excel, uh, excel file you can also control over there but the options we are just exploring in the test engine now let us continue guys so this is a one example right so i am going to create uh, one more uh, package okay so in this uh, uh, part 2 okay so what i have is uh, let me create let me delete these two classes okay so test ng3 now uh, i have uh, five classes guys i mean i'm sorry i have one class with the five methods a b c d e okay now Uh, i want to uh, you know category i want to you know uh, separate them based on their functionality okay for example uh, i use the test case a test case c and test case e for the regression purpose these test case belongs to test case category and method b is a smoke test actually and method d is a summary test okay so sometimes we categorize right so for example if you have a banking application you may write 100 uh, test cases 10 test cases may be belongs to credit card application a credit card module and 10 belongs to debit card module so those kind of things are common right so not every test case belongs to only one module one specific functionality we write the test cases for different different functionality and if you want to categorize them uh, based on their functionality or based on Uh, some regression or smoke or sanity we have to separate them using group concept right so how can we do that okay now in order to group your test cases in order to group your test cases we have one option that is called as groups okay so here in groups you have to 
provide a name of the group for example i will say this belongs to regression this belongs to regression in the similar fashion uh, the c is also belongs to regression and the e is also belongs to regression okay now what i said earlier this b is not a regression test case but of course this is a sanity test case similar fashion the method d is a not a sanity test case it is a something called smoke test case okay for example whenever i have to run a smoke test i don't want to specify uh, you know uh, i don't want to uh, check what uh, which method is a smoke test and whether it should be included or excluded i don't want to do that okay so if i specify smoke smoke should run okay so how can we uh, do this so we have done only categorization but we need to run only the specific group and let's see how we can do that okay so for this the same concept we need to create the xml file uh, in order to do that so i'm going to create the xml file you can see uh, convert to test ng okay so one uh, test ng one is also there and let me add it as a test ng two simply say next and simply say finish okay now here you can see uh you know the normal whatever the uh, you know we discussed right the same thing our structure is been coming over here okay now we need to uh, decide which group to be executed which groups to be not executed okay so let us see how can we do that okay here you can see we have something called groups okay so once group tag is there we have something called a uh, run okay so in the run tag you have to specify which group to run which group to not run for example in this case i want to run uh, only the uh, regression test case only the regression test case okay now in this case you can also specify uh, come over here and simply say regression okay now if i run the program what i have done simply i have added the group tag and then run tag and then include or exclude okay if you have uh, different groups and if you want to uh, perform uh, if you don't want to perform any, any specific group you can add exclude okay but in this case i am simply saying please include only the regression one okay so in this case what is the regression guys so a and c and then e these three are the regression cases now if i run the program you can see uh, only the group uh, which belongs to regression has been run now for example today the requirement is came to uh, run the smoke so you don't need to do anything simply uh, come over here and change uh, to like this smoke and you know you can see d belongs to similar way sanity is also possible run the program the same concept will come here you can group the test cases and you can uh, execute only that particular specific one okay this is the one point to remember second point is for example this test case uh, c belongs to uh, both smoke test sanity test okay this particular c method we use it as a smoke test as well as the sanity test as well as the uh, smoke test so can we uh, make one particular test case belongs to multiple groups yes of course you can do so by specifying comma you can add uh, n number of groups where it belongs to okay for example if i mark it as a uh, smoke okay so what happens if i run the smoke now c and d will definitely come because the one specific specifically belongs to smoke and the one which belongs to all the categories will be executed now i will uh, say smoke over here and run the program this time it will execute uh, you can see c and d okay d is getting executed because it belongs to smoke and the same thing applicable with the c also okay if i run the sanity also v and c will uh, come to the uh, come for the execution okay so clear guys uh, what is mean by groups and uh, how to uh, use them yes question okay thank you so let us continue guys this conference will now be recorded okay so uh, we have discussed uh, how to uh, you know create the groups and how to uh, you know control them from the xml file okay so we need to discuss one more topic i'm going to create uh, here let me say day two dot part three or else we copy paste it
okay so let me remove all these tags because these are not required for me So I have two uh, uh, one class guys. So test ng three and where I have two methods method a and method b. Okay. Now, uh, for example, there may be a chance where a test case cannot be executed without completing the other test case. That means a dependent test case. Okay. Uh, uh, let's say for example method b uh, should not get executed unless until this method a gets completed. Okay. So do we have any option like that? Okay. In test ng yes. Okay, so in test ng we have one option that is called as uh, dependent. You can see depends on method. Okay, so for example here you have to provide the name of the method which is dependent on your uh, test case. Okay, now uh, if I run the program, what happens? Let's see. Okay, so I'm just running the program. Okay, so you can see A is getting executed and B is getting executed. Okay, because uh, this particular uh, method B uh, gets executed only when this particular method A becoming a uh, true. Okay, so what's the difference? Then I can specify a priority equal to one over here. I can specify a priority equal to two. But what's the difference between both? We need to understand it. Okay, so I'm just copying it and just commenting it out. Okay, and I am just uh, you know going in the regular manner. Okay, so why should I? Why should I? not go for the priority for example if i specify priority equal to sorry not here i have to write it here so priority equal to one in the similar fashion and if priority equal to two priority equal to two in this case what will happen so definitely uh, method uh, method one will be executed first and then method be executed second but the disadvantage in this way is this is not a dependency case this is executing the test cases based on the priority for example if this test case is failing okay what i will do intentionally i will fail the test case uh, i will simply say uh, asset asset dot asset true and i will say false Okay, this will definitely uh, intentionally we are failing the test case. Okay, now in this case method B will be executed or not that we have to see it. Okay, now I'm just running the program. We can see though the method A is failed, still B is able to continue. The reason is uh, both are not dependent on each other. We just to set only the priority. Okay, so in this case, if this particular test case is failing, doesn't matter. So it will continue. But uh, not. Uh, what is our actual requirement? Our actual requirement is to we should be executed only if successful completion of A, right? So in that case, this option is not going to help us. So this option is the right one. Okay. So here I will say dependent on A. Okay. Then the program. What happens? Uh, it will execute the method a and if it is getting passed then only b will be executed so same concept the asset dot asset 2 i will apply over here okay now run the program see what is the output we are going to get it you can see method a is getting failed uh, because of this reason because intentionally i have failed but however the b b is skipped you can see b is skipped okay so here you can see it depends on uh, depends on not successfully finished method Okay, the reason being is B A bus A got failed, so this method cannot be executed. That exception it is giving over here. You can see uh, depends on a not successfully finished method. That means uh, the you know, methods where it belongs to, uh, where it is dependent on, got failed. So anyhow, we know right. So dependent test cases fail means there is no point in continuing the original test case right so there's a reason it's getting failed so this is where the depends on method comes into the picture comparing with the priority okay so i hope it is clear guys the comparison uh, between the setting of the priorities and the depends on methods okay so i'm continuing to the next topic this conference will now be recorded Okay. Now we have seen uh, what is meant by depends on method. Now we will continue uh, the other topics. Uh, let me make it as a part four. And here in test ng. So far uh, we are creating the methods which are not taking any input, which are not taking any input. 
so how can we provide the input for a method for example this is a login method this is a login to application method login to application method login to application method okay so how can we uh, provide the data for it so generally we know that for login to application we need two parameters for example string username and i will say string password string password so how can uh, you know uh, send this data from different places okay so in test engine right so obviously generally people use this two options okay so either you can use xml file whatever we are generating right so from there you can pass the data to the uh, you know test engine as a test and also you can uh, use something called data provider concept okay so by using the data provider concept either you can send the data in object double dimensional array or else in the same fashion you can use any external uh, sources like excel file or any other things okay so most of the people use as excel so we need to see how to pass the data from the xml file in the similar fashion how to pass the data from the excel file using the data provider concept so these two concepts we have to see now okay and uh, now uh, this one uh, we have to pass the data from the xml file base the first option okay now how can we do that so in order to do that we have uh, one option that is called as parameters you can see parameters in string of uh, you know array it is taken right so parameters equal to so here you can specify the uh, here you can see this method is uh, got deprecated over here right so any method name or any option which is getting you know as the line means it's got uh, uh, you know deprecated right so here how can you do that if you don't like earlier we used to write over here but we have one option that is called as parameter so especially when you are using any imports right so make sure that you are using the right one so here don't use the first one and you will not get the correct option the second one is the right one okay so try to select the correct one and from here you can also specify uh, the parameter name okay so name equal to you can see I think name is not required so name is required in the data provider here you can simply specify the names how you want to do for example this is you name and this is for example PSWD password okay so this name and this name may be same may not be same okay you can give the same name you you, are, you may not give the same name it is completely your wish okay but this one and this one uh, the name that you are specifying in the array should match which is present in the XML file that we will see now. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, method login to application from test ng2 and also I'm going to print uh, username equal to and I will say plus username. Let me copy it and paste it over here and and password equal to let me print the password on the console. Okay, this is the password we have. Okay now uh, whatever the parameters uh, just we will integrate selenium in the future but time being i'm just printing on the console now we have provided the parameter two parameters u name and the password okay now i will convert this to the xml file very nice convert to this one and here we have already tested g2 right so i'm just adding the third one okay simply say next and then finish now here we have to control right so let me take this example control a and then paste it so this one belongs to part four and then test g3 okay but we need to pass the uh, parameters we need to pass the parameters so how do you pass the parameters for a test case okay so here you can see we have one option that is called as parameter okay so here it is asking for name and here it is asking for value okay so name whatever you specify over here right this should match now okay so i will say control c and paste it name is nothing but a username so what is the username for example username is user02 okay this is the password this is a username similar fashion i will copy this line and i will paste it and i will say what is the password okay so password is nothing but this pswd and pswd and value is going to be for example password Pass one two three four. Okay, password one two three four. Anything is fine. Okay, so whatever the password you have for your application, you can specify over here. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna run my program and see 
these two values are getting passed to this particular uh, method or not okay so i'm just running the program and you can see uh, it is getting displayed you can see user 02 and password it is getting holded okay you can see the application from here and see uh, this one username is user02 and password is pass1234 okay so this one if you if this particular one is not matching for example i say passwords okay so try to run the program and see uh, what is the output we are getting you can see uh, log into application uh, has has not been marked actually so what exactly this is optional okay that means the name that you are specifying over here it is not able to find anywhere over here it is not able to find anywhere over here okay so if this particular one you are using that means it should match exactly the parameters that you specify in this list over here otherwise it will not work and this one and this one you can give any name the order whatever you have the same order it will be replacing the values you can have same name you can have different name it shouldn't be an issue at all but this name and this name should match with uh, you know this the name which are specifying in the uh, method and the same name you have to you know mention in the xml file okay if you run the program now it shouldn't be an issue it will be uh, continuing its execution you can see method application from here so like this you can uh, pass the data uh, you know if you have uh, any login page or any uh, registration page or any uh, emergency contact or anything which application you have you can pass the data like this but the disadvantage that i feel is actually if you have a hundred uh, uh, parameters right so sending hundred parameters is very typical right? so you cannot uh, mess up your xml file like this you can add a number of parameters keep on adding it means it will be confusion for the user and also uh, you know we will be losing the control over our test data right so best option is we all know we use the excel file okay but this is the option which is also present in the um, you know uh, this particular uh, we will say uh, xm uh, in this particular test ng okay but we can use uh, maybe uh, specifying the browser name when the user is running like parameter browser name equal to uh, value okay For, we will read this value before test or before so somewhere where we can Use this option and then you can decide which browser the user has to run okay which browser uh, you know it, we have to initialize whether it is a chrome or exactly it is you can specify browser name equal to and you can specify the same thing over here okay so i hope it is clear guys okay so if it is clear means i will continue with the second option where generally we will use it okay so here i'm going to copy paste the same uh, example my testing okay now before logging to application i want to specify uh, which <clears throat> browser uh, it has to be launched for example this is launch browser or launch application which is this one okay so here before launching the browser the user has to decide uh, which uh, browser he has to launch whether it is a chrome what exactly it is so here i will say string b type browser type it's it could be any name the same thing we just provide the option over here so here browser type browser type that's it okay so launching the application launching the e type browser 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 for automation for execution in this one okay now what i will do i will pass this parameter from our uh, you know xml file okay so this time i will just copy this uh, existing one and paste it and it will say four okay now here in four i will specify the browser name right so here let me delete it and let me pass it as a uh, browser type okay this time browser type i want to execute the test cases in for example chrome browser okay for example chrome browser you will see the example with the uh, integration of selenium also but just uh, showing where generally people use this okay so here if i run the program what will happen okay 
now here you can see the exception is coming because uh, the same concept whatever even if whenever it is not matching right so uh, the error message now coming right now again okay the reason being is whenever you have a parameters you cannot write from here you cannot say run as test ng because the value has to come from the xml file okay so whenever you have any parameter stack so you cannot run from the class level you have to run from the xml level so you can see run the program now you can see uh, what happened One second, guys. I will make a mistake. Okay, this method has to be here. Parameters and run the program now. Wait, am I making a mistake, guys? One second. U name is required. Okay, my bad. So here it should be D. Part four. Test ng four. Part for testing before. Okay, this is a mistake, guys. So we are running the run class. Okay, so here now if I run the program, okay, so you can see launching the Chrome browser for the execution. Okay, so you can add if and else condition over here if this particular uh, browser type equal to Chrome, the web driver drive equal to new Chrome driver, and if it is IE browser, you can uh, you know launch the specific uh, you know driver instance. Okay, in this way we will be using the uh, parameter concept in test ng this conference will now be recorded now uh, what i'm going to do is uh, uh, let me copy this particular one test ng dot file dot xml file okay now so far uh, we have seen how to pass the parameters how to pass the data from the xml file now we have to see the other option that is called as data provider okay so now what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this i'm going to remove this and uh, same example we have user id and password uh, which example you guys this is the one right so i can copy paste this option so let me copy paste it and i will remove this one okay because we are not using the parameter concept right so we are using some different concept okay so now here we have something called data provider guys you can see uh, og dot test ng dot annotations okay so one of the annotation apart from test data we have seen is parameter and also third one we are seeing is uh, data provider okay so here uh, you know we have to specify which data provider uh, exactly you want to work with for example uh, my data provider name equal to for example i will say um, my data provider i'm just giving a, you can give any name okay good name so i'm just simply saying my data provider okay so that's it guys so first whenever you want to implement the data provider in your uh, for your test case right so all you need to do is you have to specify uh, at the data provider tag name i mean annotation and then you have to specify the name of the um, data provider okay so now uh, once uh, you have done this one we have to implement a data provider which will pass the data to this particular method <coughs> i'm sorry guys so we have to uh, implement that okay so how can we implement that particular uh, method okay so here you can see uh, data provider okay so here i will say public public static okay the return type of a uh, object e i mean return type of this particular method is object to double dimension array guys okay so here you can give anything my data okay so here you can see this one okay so return statement okay now this is how we have to implement okay so here we have to specify a name equal to and this one data provider okay so remember one thing guys so uh, whatever the name uh, you have provided in this particular method that particular data provider has to be implemented okay so that is the reason i am telling that this data provider hey boss i'm going to implement this okay so what is the return type guys return type is going to be object to double dimensional array object to double dimensional array now here what i'm going to do i'm going to create a double dimensional array object 
से सो ऑब्जेक्ट ओ बी जे इक्वल टू न्यू ऑब्जेक्ट न्यू ऑब्जेक्ट वी हैव टू स्पेसिफाई द डबल डायमेंशनल राइट सो हियर लेट मी से फोर एंड लेट मी से टू ओके आर एल्स लेट मी से थ्री एंड लेट मी से टू okay here the important point that you need to understand is what is meant by 3 and what is meant by 2 okay so 3 i mean when i say a row number right so this is a number of rows right so whenever we have a double dimension array the first one this one represents the uh, number of rows okay this one represents the number of columns right but in data provider the first one the first one represents a uh, number of times number of times the test case has to be executed the number of times the test case has to be executed and the second option will tell you the number of parameters to pass number of parameters to pass okay for example the meaning of this particular statement is now i want to execute the test case for three times with the two parameters okay now what happens if i implement this uh, if i fill the data within this object and if i pass the same object over here our login to application will be executed two uh, three times with the two parameters because here i specified two and two uh, parameters should be present if not present it is going to throw the exception i hope it is clear what is mean by uh, row and what is mean by column Here, row is nothing but a number of times a test case has to be executed, and this one is nothing but a uh, you know number of parameters we need to specify. Okay, so I'm going to fill the data, guys, in the double dimension array object. Okay, so you can see object of zero and zero equal to, and you can say for example user zero two user user zero two. Similar fashion, the similar fashion. Let me say. Type of expression must be an array. An array. Okay. Uh, uh, the syntax of the double dimension array is not good now. Okay. So my bad. Okay. So let me add a couple of things. This is a first row, and this is a second row, and this is a third row, and this is a fourth row, right? So we know, right? So obviously, three rows means zero, one, two, three will come. So at zero row and zero and one, what is the output? Okay. So here, password two. Similarly, user zero three, and password is three, and you can see this is going to be one zero, and then one comma zero, one comma one, right? So similar fashion, this is two comma zero, and then two comma one. So we are filling the double dimension array, guys. We are doing nothing. Simply, we are just providing the uh, you know filling up the double dimension array, whatever we have mentioned over here, right? So here you can see uh, our user zero four. And let me mark it as a uh, some uh, username. So whatever object we have filled up, right? So we do same thing uh, from here. Okay. So what I have done, guys? Simply, uh, you can see uh, I have created a method with error test, and you have two parameters: username and password. And then I am simply writing one annotation that is called as data provider, and you have to specify the name of the data provider. So once you specified it, we need to uh, implement it, right? So whatever we promise it, right? So here we are promising that hey, boss, uh, please use the my data provider, right? So once it is implementing, I and mean, once it is uh, defined over here, means we have to implement. Okay? So here you can see data provider name equal to the same name should match, otherwise it is not going to execute it. Okay? So the return type uh, we know, right? So object double dimension array is a return type of the this particular method. And uh, this particular one that represents the number of times a test case should run, and this one represents the number of columns it will take it, the number of arguments it accepted. Okay. Now this time I'm going to run the program and see. Uh, this time it should execute how many times? Because what the mistake it is making. Annotation method, like into application. string class okay there may be a little problem with the type conversion only but let me check what is the solution we can
This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so uh, the mistake, uh, the basic mistake uh, we have performed, the guys, so this syntax is very bad. So it shouldn't be, in, uh, it shouldn't be like this. So we have to provide data provider equal to name. We have to provide in this way. Okay, so this is nothing but it takes like implementation, right? So uh, my bad, guys. So extremely sad. This is not a one which is expected, right? So this one is the right one. So here, data provider equal to name. You have to specify. Okay. Now let's try to run the program. Now you can see it should uh, display the output. You can see uh, the output is getting displayed like this. 002 password 003 and then like this it will be displayed. Okay. So if you add one more time, right? So what happens? For example, four and fill up the data. Three and then three. And you can specify user zero five and then five five. Okay, and uh, that's it. You just run the program, and what happens? It this will consider the fifth one also. You can see one, two, three, and four times. Okay, so number of parameters should match this. So, for example, if I say three, and if I run the program, if I run the program, now you can see the exception is getting displayed. You can see. A method matcher exception that means the number of arguments uh, you specified in the application and the method like into application method and the number of parameters you specified in the data provider are not same are not same okay so yet yeah, it should be same guys so that's the reason I'm just specifying like uh, I would say two in the number program same output guys okay so syntax is guys it's here it's not a data provider don't make mistake like me uh, here it should be data provider name equal to data provider and then data provider annotations we have to provide here okay so that's it guys so this is how uh, data provider work out and uh, we will see how to read the same data from the excel file and also if the more number of columns are present uh, how can we handle for example uh, if you have username password that's fine but what happens if your application if your page is having 100 fields to be filled so you cannot add 100 fields over here right so very typical right so that is also we are going to see how to handle that in tomorrow's class okay so this conference will now be recorded so that's it for today's session guys so tomorrow we will see uh, how to uh, you know read the data I mean from the Excel file and how to handle uh, different kind of scenarios if more number of parameters are there how can we handle so those kind of things we're gonna see in tomorrow's sessions uh, thanks for the session